Mm, man, I could just use a juicy grass-fed burger with gluten-free bun and some sweet potato fries on the side with some cinnamon. Just that salty, sweet, savory, umami, all the flavor profiles. But I'm choosing not to. I'm choosing not to feast in a world that bombards us every which way with all the food. The social media, driving down the street at every single fast food chain is <laughs> bombarding my eyeballs. Just saying, eat me, eat me. Our culture is immersed into eating and that's awesome, but I've think we're a little bit too immersed into the feasting. We're not taking enough steps into the fasting where we can really appreciate the power within food. As we have been for thousands of years, our, our ancient ancestors would go long bouts of time without eating. And we're here today where we're eating so often, every two hours, we're snacking every hour. It's not good for our health. It's not good for our psyches, our spirits. And that's why I'm here creating this video. This is gonna be the ultimate guide to three-day fasts. We're gonna go into a lot so let's jump into it. Hello friends, my name is Christian Van Camp, a holistic lifestyle and performance coach, and I'm all about natural healing and tapping back into the roots of nature, our primal living. And in this modern era, it's real hard to tap into that because we have so much technology taking us every which way. But I'm gonna make it easy and swift for you to tap into natural healing and natural living with long-term fasts. We're gonna go into how you can optimize, how you can optimize, how you can optimize your three-day fast and take it to the next level, making it swift and easy for you so it's not this dreadful gurgling of the stomach, eating yourself from the inside out. So let's jump into it, the master plan to three-day fasts. First, let's identify number one, which is the why. Set the intention. Why do you want to fast in the first place? Well, fasting has been around intentionally for many, many years for spiritual reasons relating to religion, maybe cultural reasons. So identify, do you want to do it for more of a, a spiritual reason? You're getting away from all the, the lustful aspects of eating all the time. Is it based on your religion or is it a cultural reason? Is it based on mental and cognitive resilience that you build from not eating and that, that mental fortitude that comes with it of abstaining from the pleasures of eating all the time and feasting instead of choosing to fast? Is it related to, oh, I really want to detox my body, my physical body so I can start healing? Maybe it's gut health related, giving your digestive system a reboot. Or is it related to fat metabolism and boosting your metabolism so you can process that unwanted fat? So identify out of all those ones, all four of those, is it spiritual, is it mental, is it physical related to fat loss or physical related to detoxing and the gut health? Identify that, get crystal clear on the intention and the why because it'll make it way easier to stick through it. The next thing we're gonna get into is the types of fasts. Now there's many different types of fasts that could be three days long. We have uh, related to water fast, you're just having water. We're gonna get into what I'm gonna be doing that is gonna be most easy for you and having the best results. Mine's gonna be a water fast-esque uh, fast uh, routine. Is it a juice fast? Are you just juicing and having tons of nourishing juices for three days? Are you doing a complete dry fast and abstaining from all sorts of water or liquids or foods overall? Or is it a partial fast where you're cutting out any specific food groups? Maybe it's just like no nuts and seeds or perhaps it's uh, uh, no meat or maybe it's only meat. I don't know. Think about the different partial fasts out there. There's many different foods. So identify number two, what kind of fast do you want to do? Is it water and some other things we can add into it, which I'm going to get into today? Is it a juice fast? Is it dry fast? Or is it a partial fast removing certain types of foods? Now let's get into the what, because if you don't know the what, then you won't understand the why, the intention of what you're getting out of this. The what is the basic mechanisms and the physiology that comes with fasting. So there's two routes of energy I want you to keep in mind. There's glucose, and then we also have fatty acid metabolism. Glucose metabolism, fatty acid metabolism. Glucose is the preferable physiological default for the majority of our energy. It's an exogenous food, glucose, right? But we can also create it endogenously throughout our body. Endogenous mean inside our body. So glucose, we get it from the foods we eat, and during a 24-hour fast, when we're going without any food whatsoever, any calories, anything along those lines, we end up shifting, shifting from taking the glucose from the outside in to using it from the inside out, that endogenous production. Now this is relating to glycogen, which is stored in the liver, and on top of that, the muscle tissue, the liver and the muscle. Two places for glycogen, chains of glucose to be stored. Our body starts going through those reservoirs 
of stored glucose and using it for fuel to stay alive. It's a very crazy thing that goes on. And so during that 24 hours, this is what's going on. 24 hours of that food without any energy, without any anything at all but water, salt, and some other things we're gonna get into. This is when you shift into gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new creation, well, creation is genesis, so new creation. Creating new glucose, gluconeogenesis. It's really cool, we break down old proteins, amino acids, things in the body, and convert them into glucose. It's a crazy phenomenon. So that goes on, we start tapping into these amino acids deep within the body and using them for fuel. This is why fasting becomes so powerful as we're using unwanted cells and things that aren't being used normally because we're feeding it the glucose from the outside in, we can then tap into those things later on. So then after that 24 hour period, we're shifting into 36 hours and progressing onward from 36 hours, we have fat oxidation. This is when ketones are rising like crazy. Ketosis you might've heard about, right? Ketones create that whole aspect of ketosis where you're not getting any sort of glucose, you're getting it just from fats and proteins. But in this circumstance, it's absolutely no food source whatsoever. So you're only getting this ketogenic state coming from absolutely no foods. Ketosis is extremely powerful because this is when you start having the fat loss benefits after 36 hours usually. Could be a little bit more for some people, a little bit less, but right around that point of 36 hours, you start having ketosis kick into high gear. Fat metabolism goes up like crazy. You start having a lot of lipid oxidation. This is where the benefits of fat loss, which we went through the asking the why, this is where that comes into play. Now let's go into the major hormones impacted during a fast. Now keep in mind, no hormones work in isolation. So as I bring up these different hormones, these are just the major ones affected, but they infect everything in the human body. No hormone works in isolation. It's a powerful thing to keep in mind. Number one is insulin, secreted by the pancreas. We've heard about this, right? Because diabetes is so rampant nowadays. Insulin levels decrease during a fast immensely, right? So the body switched from what we were talking about, glucose, or the glycogen from liver, and the muscle stored glucose, and we shift into more of this fatty state. So insulin begins to, crazy enough, decrease during the fast because the, the pancreas isn't dumping. There's nothing for the insulin to do, the pancreas to do, because there's no intake of glucose. So it starts going down, which is a good thing. Then we have glucagon. Glucagon levels increase during a fast. This helps mobilize the stored glucose as glycogen in the liver and muscle throughout the brain and in the body, right? And this helps promote the breakdown of fats for energy, glucagon. Number three is growth hormone. This is such a cool one, it's one of my favorite hormones because human growth hormone or growth horm hormone increases tremendously during the fast. This is actually what preserves muscle, lean muscle mass, and actually promotes the fat metabolism. So think about our ancient ancestors surviving days without food and they're looking to kill a woolly mammoth, we wouldn't be so drained we couldn't kill them. We would actually have crazy amount of energy because of the growth hormone um, and the prevention of the muscle catabolism or muscle loss without the food for a long period of time. Now, after three plus days, you may actually start losing muscle, so keep that in mind. But around the three day period, it's unlikely you'll lose a lot of muscle because you have these protective things like growth hormone kicking up. Then you have another hormone, cortisol, number four. Cortisol may initially rise quite a bit during the beginning of the fast because it's a stressful state. It's like, oh, where's the food? Your body's freaking out. But it actually may uh, stabilize over time or decrease over time, which is great. To let you know, I'm currently fasted around 38 hours right now. No, actually, 48 hours, I apologize. I'm around day two right now, um, and I'm approaching a day and a half later. So I'm gonna be breaking my fast in about 36 more hours. So I'm going for that like sweet spot of 88 hours, 90 hours. Uh, for me, that works really well. 72, three days is right when I'm at the cusp of benefits. So cortisol is stabilized at this point now and due to some crazy hacks I'm gonna mention later. The next hormone I want you to keep in mind is leptin. The crazy part is leptin helps you feel full. Ghrelin, the other hormone we're gonna get into, makes you feel hungry. Think growling, ghrelin, growling, ghrelin. Leptin makes you feel full. Ghrelin levels tend to increase during fasting, promoting the hunger, but at a certain time frame, it actually goes the other way around. So right now, I'm not even that hungry, but about 24 hours ago during my 24 hour period of fasting, I started getting pretty hungry because ghrelin was rising and leptin was going down. Now it's switching where leptin's rising later on in the fast and ghrelin's going down. Now you'll notice it actually kind of teeter-totters throughout the day where some bouts of times you'll have incredible hunger bouts, some incredible hunger bouts, and other times you won't, so it's a pretty wild thing. 
So keep these in mind, insulin, glucagon, growth hormone, cortisol, leptin, and ghrelin. Now let's get into the nitty gritty on what you can do before and after a fast. Highest recommendation to keep in mind, take notes on this, is go low carb slash keto before and after your fast. If you integrate more of these high fats, high proteins, less of the glucose spike, insulin spike, it makes it way easier to dive into the fast because you're in more of that ketogenic state already in a food way, not a fasted way. So high fat, high protein before, break the fast with high fat, high protein as well. I don't recommend massive glucose spikes. Now some people may say, start or end your fast with fruit. That also is fine. Just listen to your body, play around with what works best. I typically recommend for the whole day prior to a, a fast you're intending on doing, do high fat, high protein, ketogenic approach, lower carb. Maybe berries, things like that is fine. This is what I recommend, play around with it. Breaking the fast as well, go a little bit lower carb so you don't have a massive insulin spike, massive sugar spike, and then you feel lousy right after or when you transition into the fast. Another thing to remember with nutrition before and after the fast is avoid heavy, hard, and digesting foods. So I don't recommend eating a ton of sirloin steak before you fast. It's really hearty, it's harder to digest. And don't necessarily eat a whole bunch of beef and hearty stuff like broccoli, raw broccoli, or uh, cauliflower, things like that that are really hard to chew after a fast as well when you're breaking it. That is gonna be hard to assimilate and break down because your stomach and your digestion especially is in a fragile state. So if you're bombarding it with all these raw foods, heavy, hard to digest beef, all that stuff's nutritious, but during that time frame before and after a fast, it's gonna be harder to adapt. Mostly after though, mostly after the fast if you're breaking it because you're really introducing the foods again. Another thing to keep in mind is avoid heavy weightlifting three days before your fast. That way you can get that optimal recovery and you're not gonna have catabolism without the resources coming in. So avoid heavy lifting exercises right before, three days prior to the fast, avoid that. Now we're gonna talk about what you can do right after it later on. And uh, plan on doing something more related to a, an elimination diet, very low inflammatory foods. So don't eat a ton of processed foods. Do your best to just avoid any franken ingredients, franken foods, high sugar, just eat whole foods as much as possible. Make it easy to digest and easy to assimilate. Here's a good example of a meal you can end your fast with, breaking your fast with, and one you can transition into the fast with. Sockeye salmon and sardines. Easy to digest fish, they're fatty, they're omega-3 rich, anti-inflammatory. Extra virgin olive oil, some lemon juice or lemon on top of that, some herbs like rosemary, you can add some coconut or coconut oil, and then throw in some bone broth on the side, some warm gut healing bone broth with some turmeric. That's a great idea, you can take advantage of a meal like that as you transition into the fast and when you break the fast. Right before you break the fast, take advantage of maybe some workout or hard activity. So you're like, okay, it's, it's 72 hours into this, it's three days into this, I'm ready to break the fast. Before you eat, do some HIIT training, some sprinting, high intensity interval training. If you're feeling really exhausted, listen to your body, don't push it too hard because your cortisol, we don't want to get too, in hot, too high, but that's the thing right there is push your body to get that fat oxidation. You're in ketosis. So you might as well prioritize what you can do to really work on that fat metabolism even more. So take advantage of some sauna, a jog, you can get some hit sprinting in or a light workout with weights. All right, we're in the last sweet spot of the fast overall, how we can optimize the fast to make it much easier for you to progress in it and not feel like you're dying from the inside out. Fasting health hacks and protocols during the fast. Number one thing is salt and electrolytes. Huge on the salt and electrolytes. If you aren't giving your body the minerals and the salt, you can do just water only, but I personally really enjoy having energy and mental clarity, especially if I'm trying to be productive during my fast and have energy for work and other things in the day. So salt, mineral rich salt, not just any random pink Himalayan salt that has traces amounts of plastic and, and uh, uh, heavy metals in it, iron oxide residues. Instead, get electrolytes and Redmond real salt or Celtic salt as great examples that are mineral rich and they're tested for those things. Another thing you can prioritize is apple cider vinegar. One teaspoon, three to four times a day throughout the day is a great way to stimulate the gastric juices, keep your metabolism high, improving your fat burning, and keeping you full as well. It helps you stay satiated. Same with the electrolytes as well. And you guys can look in the caption below for my favorite if you're interested. You can also play around with adding black coffee. Now, 
listen to your body on this because it does raise cortisol and you might feel a little jittery. Go for the decaf if you want, the Swiss water method decaf, but some organic pesticide free black coffee is gonna help you out a ton uh, for satiating, maybe giving you something you can have a flavor profile. Some people argue it breaks the fast. If it's black, I don't think it will all too much, especially if it's not caffeinated. My favorite is Purity Coffee, it's amazing. You can learn more about that in the, the link below, guys. It's awesome, they test for all that stuff. There's no mold in it, like a lot of the stuff out there. It tastes really good too. You can also play around with like milk thistle tea for liver detoxing or green tea. Uh, no sweeteners, nothing else added, keep that in mind, right? Uh, some other things I like when it comes to supplementation is Shilajit. Shilajit, it's this ancient resin from the Himalayan mountains, usually the one I'm big on is from the Sherpas, 16,000 plus feet in elevation. It's this black tar loaded up in all these minerals, fulvic and humic acids. Really powerful for the gut healing, it can keep you feeling more energy and vitality during your fast. I take that every morning, twice a day during the fast. Um, Legit is a great brand I really like. You can also get some other fulvic and humic acids from companies like Ion. Ion Gut Support is just this liquid. Do a little bit in a spoon, take it down twice a day. That's a great way to go about it uh, to heal the gut. Fulvic and humic acids also amplify a lot of detoxing of the gut. So during the fast, it's great. Play around with certain probiotics that are good during the fast as well. I'm really big on the company Just Thrive. They have a really powerful probiotic I've been taking during this fast. It's been great. Tudka is really good for liver detoxification. It's basically bile salts. So that's something you can take as well. 500 milligrams during your fast. Um, either way, it's a great non-negotiable to take year round because it really helps out with uh, cholesterol levels and cleansing the liver. So Tudka is great. Now some overall protocols you can optimize during the fast as well is Greco gum. I love Greco gum. It's this mastic gum. It's a resin from the crazy mastic trees in ancient Greece and it's been chewed for thousands of years. It's really awesome. Just think about Marcus Aurelius chewing on this. It's awesome. Uh, and it's, it really works the jawline, but it's also gonna keep you satiated by producing saliva and enzymes. So that will keep you feeling full longer. It'll also keep your mind busy. Um, so I really love the Greco gum during the fast. It boosts the metabolism a little bit because you are chewing and using the muscles, the masseters and whatnot of the jaws. So I love Greco gum. I also recommend just being consistent with your movement, light movement and walking consistently. Don't be a lazy bum during it. Do your best to get up, even if you have low energy, to walk a little bit and stack it with some sunshine. Think of this time as like, I'm gonna be photosynthesis uh, plant and I'm gonna absorb a lot of sun, which will help you feel more satiated as well. So full spectrum sun throughout the day, walking around. And also just going back to, you know, setting the intention, go back to journaling. How are you feeling? Journal your emotions, your intentions, uh, your goals of this whole fast and pushing through it and persevering. That will help you keep momentum and going forward is the overall journaling aspect of the fast. So journaling is really helpful every day. It's helped me a lot. Um, and also take advantage of this time. You're not gonna be cooking meals. You're not gonna be busy with all the meals. Be productive, start working, keep your mind busy because if you're not busy with your mind, you're gonna feel like I could just go in the, the fridge and eat everything, right? But really keep your mind busy, whether it's reading, it's journaling, it's working more, it's taking advantage of all those, the, the open times you have, whether it's an hour or three hours a day, you're opening up because you're not eating or prepping food. Really powerful way to take advantage of it and orient the fast during the time period in your life where it's really favorable. Lastly, I would say is practice breath work. You know, practice the stomach vacuum where you're and sucking in the belly, it feels really good. Pulling the belly in, you can't really see it in the camera, but pulling the belly in, massaging all the organs, give yourself a massage, get lymphatic drainage, right? It goes back to the movement. All that's really powerful during a fast. Really, just do your best to have a lemon a day if you really want to. You can have that lemon juice that helps out a ton, the apple cider vinegar, the salt throughout the day, half a teaspoon. You can have that salt half a teaspoon four times a day, just throughout the day, drink it in the water. Stay hydrated, keep filtered water, spring water if you can, avoid all the toxic tap water and, load, and fluoride and things, and just keep it very simple. You don't need to prioritize everything in this, but if you did, you're really gonna see amazing benefits spiritually, mentally, physically, detoxing, all the things. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you don't miss a beat on future videos coming out for CVC Wellness. Every week I come out on a video that is very practical when it comes to natural health, whether it's related to fitness, it's related to nutrition or mindset. I'm here to help you. Uh, I'm here to help you on this health hike. I'm getting tired now. It's approaching the evening. Like I said, I got about 36 hours left of this fast. I'm going to push through. I'll keep you guys posted and updated. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the other side.